Cheers. Um, so I'm going to be talking through a R Shiny app I developed to demonstrate utility elicitation and how R Shiny apps could be used in the wider world. Um, I know Philip talked about R Shiny earlier, um, but just a quick overview if you've not come across it before. Um, it's a package that we use to build interactive web apps directly in R. Um, the most common types of apps I see are dashboards that can be used to like visualize interactive data. However, people have used Shiny to make it like games and interactive maps. There's loads of ways our Shiny can be used. Um, once an app is developed, it can either be hosted on a public server, so for example, shinyapps.io, or private servers like university servers. Uh, and once uh, they're there, then you get a URL to them, you can share and let's make some accessible on the internet. Or you can also host them locally as well. Um, so as they are based, obviously they're version are, but you can also use HTML web elements like text boxes or drop downs, and you can theme them like you would a normal website um, in cascading style sheets, CSS. Um, so the app demonstrates utility elicitation, um, and where some people might not know what utilities are. Um, so they basically represent the strength of people's preferences for different health states. Uh, they usually fall between one, which is you're in perfect health, there's no problems, and zero, death. Um, utilities are used in economic models kind of represent um, the health effects of being in different health states. So say you've got lung cancer in an economic model. If you've not got lung cancer, you're probably at one, you're in perfect health. If you've got lung cancer, that's perhaps anything by 0.5. So not, not perfect, not dead yet. And then if you die from lung cancer, then you're zero. Yeah. Um, but to be actually used in an economic model, we first need to elicit them um, and find out what we are for each health state. So this can be done in two ways. You can either ask a sample of a population with an actual condition. So ask a sample of people with lung cancer, how would you rate your, your health out of uh, one to zero? Or you can use the general population and say, imagine you've got this condition, you've got these symptoms, what would you rate that? Um, and the app demonstrates three methods of utility elicitation. I think the most common ones um, we have time trade-off, which asks how many years of full health would you swap for 10 years of living in the health state? Standard gamble, what risk of instant death would you accept to live in full health compared to just living in the health state for the rest of your life? Those two both use kind of an iterative process to reach their final evaluation. And then the final one is the visual analog scale, which is just a thermometer uh, where participants mark what they actually choose. Um, I've explained this quite a lot to lay people, and the best way actually I've found of uh, explaining and getting people to understand is just playing through the app. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you the app. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, so it's really simple. There's only four tabs. This is the OBU tab. We're going to look at the visual analog scale first because it's the most simple one. So we have a, um, just a, an explanation of the method then the instructions. So let's pick a random health state. So it's given us a randomized health state of migraine. Um, we're going to imagine we're in that health state. What would you rate it out of 100? Um, in my opinion, that's probably around there. So I'm going to confirm my selection. And there we go. I picked 77 of the thermometer, which is the equivalent of a 0.77 utility value. The time trade off um, and standard gamble tabs are a bit more complicated than that. Um, I'll do the same, so I'll pick a random health state. So this time it's hay fever. So I've got to imagine I'm in, in that health state. And now I've got to make a choice between these two purple boxes. So would I prefer to live for four years and seven months at full health? Or would I prefer to live in the hay fever of this health state uh, for 10 years? So basically, would I trade like five and a bit years of my health um, to not have hay fever? So in this case, that's a lot of years to to trade off. So I prefer to just live with hay fever for 10 years. And you can see this is now the second choice. So again, I get to answer this question. Now I probably tried about five months not to have hay fever all the time. So I'd go for that. Oh, it's getting a bit close now. And as I work through it, it should, yeah. So each, each time I make this choice, it like cuts off the bottom of the top of the utilities and finally gets to one row. 
at the end, which means I, uh, I valued living for nine years and four months. So full health is the same as having hay fever for 10 years. Uh, this equals utility value of 0.93. So that's time trade-off. Um, and the final one, standard gamble, is quite similar. It's a similar process to that. We're just ask, answering a different question. This time we've got eczema. And we're saying, would you prefer like a 50-50 chance of dying immediately or living at full health to living with the eczema state, uh, state for the rest of your life? Uh, that's quite a high chance of death, so I definitely wouldn't take that. Um, but I don't know, one in five chance of, that's not bad. So maybe I'm indifferent between these two states. I'm just going to click I'm indifferent, which means I'm I'm happy to accept what it is at the moment. Um, so willing to risk a 21% chance of immediate death is equal to a utility value of 0.79. That's how I rate it. So that's just an overview of the app and the three methods I'm demonstrating. Um, now I'm going to go into kind of how I developed it. Um, the main overarching thing I wanted to happen was for users to be able to play through the exercise, um, almost like a game. Um, I went for buttons and text to appear and disappear as necessary. Um, to accomplish this, I use a combination of action buttons and the package Shiny JS, which is Shiny JavaScript. And that package allows you to use JavaScript without actually having to write it yourself, which is useful if you don't know it. Um, the two functions I used from that were show and hide, which I think are pretty self-explanatory. Um, so here's just a quick example. So once an action button is observed to be clicked, um, the show or hide commands are then sent out alongside all the other commands I have to have relating to that click. For example, with the numbers have changed, I want the buttons to update. So on the right, we have the code for the reset button at the end of the time trade-off exercise. Um, so when it observes it, it's been clicked, it's going to reset all the, the tables to zero or the default, and then it's going to hide all the buttons for like the main control. So when I use the first um, first starts and exercise, they have to have a health state randomized for them. Um, all the health states are included in the app are just mock health states. So I just source them for colleagues. They're not like clinically validated or anything. And I just define them as a list at the start via uh, the app. I'm aware this could definitely be included as a separate de document, but this is the first time I use R. So I kind of just put everything together and hope for the best. Um, so we've got a list. Then you, when we click the random button, we want to pick a random health state. So I use a simple bit of code just to sample from the list. Um, these last two lines are defining the reactive values. And they use reactive values throughout the, uh, the app. And they record the current state of user's experience, uh, exercise. The good thing about reactive values uh, that they change automatically when you've included them in like text boxes and stuff. So all the action buttons use reactive values. So when you click make a choice and the, uh, the utility values change, the text boxes and action buttons will change with them. Uh, moving on to the actual mechanism behind the two iterative processes. Um, I wanted to like, achieve narrowing down effect as the user plays through them. So I didn't want the user just to like play the exercise until they happen to land on the utility they wanted. I wanted the app to almost slowly push the user to the utility value that they preferred. Um, to do this, at the start, I generated a single value of uh, a single column of values from zero to 100. So all the possible values with utility values. Um, and then every time that the user selected an, an option to so make a choice, the table was split at the value that they were making the choice at. So depending on which of the boxes were selected, um, the irrelevant rows were then discarded. So for time trade-off, if they selected the live in full health for X years box, all the numbers above the current, um, current utility value were discarded. And then the opposite, if they selected the live in Y health state for 10 years box, all the numbers below the value were discarded. So again, the simple code that um, explains that. And then after that, um, the process kind of continues. A, a, a random number is selected from the remaining values in the table. All the buttons are updated. And then yeah, the users just left to repeat the process again and again until they finally get to their value. Um, so this, this all continues until one of two scenarios occur. So either the user is happy or indifferent with the, uh, the currently displayed utility value, and then they click the different button, like I did for standard gamble. 
or it comes down to there only being one row left in the table, like the time trade of exercise. Uh, when this happens, the exercise ends, all the, uh, the buttons are replaced with a box displaying the value like you saw. Uh, the reset, button come, reset buttons come up as well. Um, this is a bit of code that's just explaining that every time you make a choice, it checks, is there one row left? If, if not, it continues. But if there is one row left, then it's just going to update the, uh, the boxes, show the uh, reset button. Um, and then if the reset buttons allow for your user to either repeat the exercise with the same health state. If you've got multiple people doing the exercise, you might see how people, different people compare, or you can just restart uh, with a different health state. The visual analog scale slider was more simple to implement. Um, I use the, uh, the shiny function slider input. Um, this is what it looks like in the UI section of the codes. Um, the only thing I really had to solve was how to update the button that confirmed the value that was selected. Um, this was uh, not hard to do. Um, just I uh, it had it observing when the slider was changed and whenever the slider was changed, it then sent the command to update the button. And then there's the code for that. Um, the final thing I'm going to talk about about the app is the design and theming. So I mainly used uh, the Shine dashboard package as the basis for the app, and this is for two reasons. Um, when I first visualized what I wanted to build, I had like in my head different tabs for each of the exercises, and then the nav bar for, that, for Shine dashboard like was perfect for it. Uh, and secondly, this is my first time working in our uh, building app, and Shine dashboard is really user friendly. And there's loads of useful literature online for me to follow. Um, yeah, I didn't have to think for myself too much, which is good. The theming for the app was all done using custom CSS. Um, I had individual themes for each of the text, uh, text boxes and buttons as uh, shown in the code below. So I, I changed things like the background color, the borders, the font sizes. Um, and like the health states, I just had it all in the same file. I could have had it in a separate CSS file, but um, it wasn't too hefty, so it wasn't much of an issue. Um, my final slides about the current and future applications of this app and then just general Shiny apps. Um, so currently, the apps only uses the learning tool. Uh, we use it in training courses. Um, however, I actually use it a lot just in my personal life, explaining to friends and family what I do. Um, so these are people who have got no, they don't know what health economics is or what a utility is. Um, but when I show them the app and let them play through it themselves, it really does help them understand what's going on. And they, they, it kind of like clicks with them. So yeah, I found it to be a useful tool to explain something that's, that's moderately technical um, to lay people. Um, so this shows it has a potential not only to be used to train people who have knowledge in health economics, like people in consultancy or academia, um, but also potentially with things like ad boards, where you've got people who have not experienced, uh, have not got experience in utilities. Uh, but should but need to know like a technical concept pretty quick um to let me play around with that in, in that board would be a good way of learning um one of the limitations of my current app is that there's no way to save each playthrough um but this could definitely be added either locally or um like saving the cloud so i have own my apps running on like the university of york service just online so if I wanted to save anything, I could save it to a like Google Drive sheet file, maybe. Um, but if it was running locally, I could just save all the responses down to a PC. Um, I was also thinking, because it could be used for data collection in the future, you might want it not on a laptop or a PC. You might just want it on a phone or like a tablet. So I was reading up on how this could be done. Um, and I came across a Shiny app that was specifically built for use on an, uh, an Android phone. It's called HTrack. Uh, I've linked it in the references if anyone wants to read. But basically, you can run R on a Linux environment um, on an Android phone and then run Shiny on that. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, have a, have a read of that. So once the ability to save all the uh, responses is added, I can see avenues for this kind of utility solicitation app or just a broader data collection app for a trial, for instance, uh, be used to collect real world evidence. Um, I think R and R Shiny have numerous advantages over other options. I'm going to go through them now. Um, so firstly, it's free, accessible to all. If you've got a small trial, 
um, and you you don't want to have to like pay for a massive software license or something if you're going to use an off-the-shelf option. Um, secondly, a lot of people are already familiar with R, um, and putting together a simple app like this isn't overly demanding. Like I said, I came into this not knowing anything about R or R Shiny, and I managed to put something together that kind of works. Um, so yeah, if you're already familiar, I'm sure it's even easier. Um, another benefit is that the data could all be collected and analyzed all in R without need for additional software or for transferring the data. Um, so if you've got people collecting the data for you and then put it in a spreadsheet and then transferring that spreadsheet to, to you, you probably need to then clean it before you can use it in R. Um, but if it was all done in R, then you could have the outputs exactly as you need them. Uh, and there's just no, there's no steps in between. Probably it's quicker and from like collection to anal analysis and also quicker because there's no cleaning involved. Um, another benefit um is that you can make the app as bespoke as you need to your trial or however you're going to use it um this isn't the case maybe for off the shelf data collection methods so if you've got like a if you're looking for a really specific outcome or you're looking at a really specific trial population um you could target your app exactly to that um so yeah, this leads me kind of my final point which sums up the potential of our shine applications um because i i think they're just they're quite simple to make. They can produce um, easily manipulatable data. Um, and then you can use that data, uh, you can collect data using it, and then use it to support context for decision making or to collect actual like trial data. Um, those are references. And I think there's a few minutes left for questions if anyone's got any. That's fantastic, Tom. Thank you very much. And thank you for keeping to time. So in the chat, a few people have helpfully shared links to the paper in the app. Um, I'll just ask, uh, I've got a couple of questions pending any further ones. Uh, well, the first is a comment actually. So it's interesting you're using this in your personal life. So perhaps it might lead to uh, the first marriage due to a shiny app or something. Um, the, the other comment is you you said you were new to OR. Do, do you have a programming background or a different sort of background? And how did you find using OR in, in this context? Um. I'd only used VBA before, um, so I kind of just sat down and I knew I already had made a kind of something similar to this in VBA, so I kind of had like an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and I just sat down and started programming. <laughs> and it Fair took quite, quite a lot of time to like, because I had no idea what I was doing, basically. I don't feel like small training sessions, but, um, but yeah, I, I learned pretty quick and it turns out R is pretty user friendly, uh, where in my, I, I found it to be. Um, and do you, do you feel like you're a convert to or now, or do you still feel? Oh yeah, because yeah. I've made I've made other apps and stuff. Okay. <laughs> Great. And I've, uh, a question from Howard about um, if using this to collect real trial data is there a data security concern, and would that be resolved by using a secure private server? Yeah. So I um, in that HTRAC paper, they it was specifically used on encrypted Android devices. Um, so I think if you were if you were collecting trial data, you definitely could. It, keep encrypted. What was there another uh, question from James? Um, would you consider a teaching application aimed less at patients and more at researchers? Uh, yeah, like, so yeah, like I said, it's actually we use it as a teaching application sure. um, already. Uh, actually, just just today, um, someone asked me if they could use it in a, a workshop um, for people to play through. So yeah, it's it's being used right now. Cool. That's awesome. Um, if there are any further questions, please stick them in the chat. But if not, we'll move on to. Uh, thank, thanks so much again, uh, Tom. Uh, our next presentation, which is Harari.